there and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Angie and I'm a chemist who loves makeup. Ariana Grande recently launched her makeup line, REM Beauty, which is named after the REM stage of the sleep cycle. We are gonna be looking at the ingredients in her products and I'm gonna tell you what these do in the formula, how this affects the performance in the formula, and I will give you my thoughts on them. Now, we're not gonna do the whole line because we would be here forever. We're just gonna be focusing on the lip products today. If there's any other products you want me to look into from the line, please let me know in the comments down below. I also purchased three of these products, so I will be doing a review on those in the future once I have them in my possession. The first product we are gonna be looking at is a practically permanent lip stain marker. As described, it is a modern take on a traditional lip stain with a non-drying feel, and it says that Ariana Grande likes to use this product with the utmost importance plumping lip gloss. So we'll do that one after this. The way that these lip stain marker products work is that there are colorants that are dissolved into other ingredients that either evaporate or get absorbed by the skin. And then these colorants stain your lips. It's different than a lip gloss or a liquid lipstick or a lipstick, which in fact is putting a layer of product on top of your skin. And looking at this ingredients list, there was one thing that was really odd to me. The fourth highest ingredient is alcohol and the eighth highest ingredient is denatured alcohol. The reason why this is odd to me is because these are the same compound. They are both ethanol. Denatured just means that something was added to the alcohol in order to make it undrinkable. Typically, this is a bittering agent to make it taste bad. This is a typical practice with alcohol that is going into cosmetics or pharmaceuticals because doing this avoids the taxes that are typically put on alcoholic beverages. From the consensus of science Twitter, it seems like this was probably just an error on REM Beauty's part because these are the same compound and typically all alcohol is denatured. These two should be combined and therefore would actually appear higher on the ingredients list most likely. This probably most likely happened because they had purchased a raw material that was a blend of ingredients. Typically alcohol is a solvent in these kind of blends. A solvent is what you dissolve other ingredients into. So they probably put alcohol on its own into the formula and then put alcohol again as part of a blend and one of them said denatured and one of them did it. They should have combined them, they didn't. This is a pretty careless error from whoever was putting the ingredients list together, but I'm not gonna say it's a red flag from the brand for me, but it does make me look out for other mistakes because if there are a lot of these kind of little errors, it does make me concerned that there might be other problems with the brand, but one mistake will give them a pass on. In this formula, alcohol is gonna be a vessel for those colorants to dissolve into, and it is going to evaporate away to help dry down this product faster. And in this formula, there are a few other types of ingredients. There are a few humectants. Humectants are ingredients that are really good at drawing water to themselves. And this in turn hydrates the skin, in this case specifically, your lips. There are things like butylene glycol, glycerin, and sodium hyaluronate in this formula. And what these are all gonna do is when you apply it, it is gonna help hydrate the lips. This hopefully is gonna counteract the drying effects of that alcohol. I am not against putting alcohol into cosmetic formulas, but in too high of a concentration, it can be drying. Hopefully there's enough of these humectants in there that'll alleviate any of the drying effects from the alcohol in this formula. Another type of ingredient that's in this lip stain marker are film formers. Film formers, when dry, form thin flexible layers on the skin. This helps the product to last longer and potentially can also help keep some of that moisture in from the humectants so that way your lips continue to stay hydrated. The first one we'll talk about is the Acacia Senegal Gum. This also functions as a thickener, which is pretty obvious, thickens the formula. Also function as an emollient, meaning it's gonna leave a soft conditioning feeling to the lips. Another ingredient that you'll see that works as a film former is this methyl acrylamide copolymer. It has a really long name in here. If you've seen these acrylamide copolymer type of ingredients, there's a lot of them out there with a similar name. It's most likely going to be a film former and perform the same way. There's also PVP in this formula, which also acts as a film former. So there's a few of those type of ingredients, so this should make it last a long time. The last ingredient I wanna point out in this formula is sodium saccharin. So this is a no sugar sweetener. It is 
The trade name is Sweet and Low, which I'm sure you've heard of. And this is gonna make the taste of the product tolerable. A lot of times with products, you have to put a sweetener like this or some sort of fragrance ingredient, which would be a flavoring in this case, in order to make the product not taste terrible. Back to the line as a whole, one thing I thought was really interesting is that she features a lot of consumer panels for each of these products. Now, this is very typical. I've seen it for mascaras, for skincare, but I haven't really seen it for lip products in the past. It's not really common. For me, these don't really impact my buying decisions that much because I know they're only gonna put if the results were good anyway, but I thought it was interesting that she took the time, spent the money to do these panels. Let me know if these kind of panels featured in marketing impacts you at all or if you don't really pay attention to it. When I first saw that she was releasing a lip stain marker, I really was not into the idea of this product at all. It just seems like something that was popular really, really long ago and it's not really a thing anymore. But as I got to thinking about it, if you have any level of mask wearing, depending on where you live, this could actually possibly be a really beneficial product. This is staining your lips, so that would mean that you're probably not gonna get transfer on your mask. For some people, this could be a really beneficial product. So we're moving on to the utmost important lip gloss, which, I, as I mentioned before, it said that Ariana Grande likes to wear this on top of the lip stain marker. So this is supposed to give you a smooth, high shine finish, and it's supposed to have a warm and tingly feeling with a plumping effect and a subtle vanilla scent. This is a very short ingredients list. There's only about seven ingredients in here. Dimethicone is the top ingredient in here. It is gonna give you a really soft feeling and it's really good at repelling water, so that would help it last longer, I would hope. So as I mentioned before with the lip stain, sometimes ingredients are sold in blends and you add the whole blend of ingredients into your formula I believe that that was the case with this formula. There is an ingredient from the company BASF, and that is their Ultra Filling Spheres, which is what I believe is in this formula. That is a combination of ethyl hexyl palmitate, trihydroxysterin, sodium hyaluronate, and glucomannan. So I'm going to read you the description of this combination of ingredients. Ultra Filling Spheres technology is based on the ability of dehydrated and cross-linked spheres to penetrate the upper layers of the epidermis and to absorb the water that evaporates from the deep dermis. Thanks to their hygroscopic properties, side note, hygroscopic means that they're good at drawing water to themselves, the volume of the spheres increases rapidly. Thus inflated, they tighten the skin, smoothing out wrinkles and leaving an elastic skin surface with long lasting hydration. So based on the description of this, these ingredients are gonna help give you that plumper look to your lips. This is something interesting to point out if you are looking into ingredients list. Reading the ingredients list on its own doesn't always tell you everything you need to know about the product. The ingredients on a list always are added individually. A lot of times they are sold in a blend of ingredients such as is in the case in this case. So that's something to keep in mind too because in this case, in this blend, they were meant to be spherical. You see this a lot with encapsulation of active ingredients which is much different than adding those ingredients separately. There is fragrance in here, again, to help with the flavoring of this product. The only other ingredient in here is vanilla butyl ether. This contributes to that vanilla flavor, but this is also what gives that warm tingling feeling that you feel when you apply this product. Because of that sensation, it also brings out more color in your lips, so you're probably gonna see more of a pinkish or a reddish tone coming out when you use this product, due to this ingredient. And I'm gonna guess that the fragrance ingredient in here is also vanilla to emphasize that flavoring, which is probably because of this vanilla ingredient that they were using to give that tingling sensation. Personally, for me, I would not get this product. I do not like plumping lip glosses. I remember using, I wanna say it was the Too Faced lip injections, and just the feeling on my skin, it like that tingling feeling feels like I should not have this on my lips. It's not the same, but it reminds me in the lab, if you get acid on you, it doesn't feel burning, it feels like a tingling, itching feeling, and that's immediate code for you need to go get that off of you. So that's what that reminds me of, which is why I do not like lip pumping products. But if you are into this kind of thing, this seems like a really simple lip gloss. 
it doesn't really seem like anything special to me. If you want a clear lip gloss, there's a ton of brands who make them and you could probably just get one at the drugstore that is just as good. Now we're gonna talk about the, the other lip gloss is called the On Your Color Plumping Lip Gloss. This one is also a plumping lip gloss, but it is colored instead of cleared. And instead of a warm tingly feeling, this one said it's gonna give you a cool tingly feeling. So this one has a lot more ingredients in here. A lot more. Most of these ingredients are either some sort of oil, like an essential oil or an extract. And when you have a lot of these in products, it does make the list pretty long. There are things in here like rosemary and tomato extract, which seems super random. I don't know if I've even seen those in cosmetic products before, but it is making me kind of hungry. Let's first get into the plumping and cooling feeling of this product, because that's one of the key features. And I think this sensation comes from a few different ingredients. First is gonna be the mentha piperita peppermint oil. I think if you've ever had a peppermint, you know it can kind of leave a cooling sensation in your mouth when you're eating it, and I feel like this might be doing the same thing. And I believe you're also gonna get this feeling from the menthol lactate, which is supposed to be a more subtle form of menthol, which is similar to the ingredient in Icy Hot. So you are gonna get that cooling sensation and actually almost a numbing sensation from this is what it seems like. There is also another very surprising ingredient in here, which I again have not seen in any other cosmetic product. And I think this also contributes to the plumping effect, which is capsicum frutescens resin. So this ingredient is actually derived from pepper. Now, I could not find a lot of info about this ingredient. The only info I could find was actually from another skincare line. I couldn't confirm it for sure, but I was trying to find out if this resin had the ingredient capsaicin, which is what makes your peppers hot. And I feel like if it does contain this ingredient, that would definitely contribute to that plumping effect. Because I remember the other day I was cutting a jalapeno and then I touched my lips with my fingers and you know what it did? It made my lips red. They felt kind of tingly. They, I'm sure they probably looked a little bit plumped because they were kind of irritated from the peppers. So I think this could actually be partially contributing to this plumping formula. Now that alone makes me very averse to trying this product because I am not a spicy person, but I know a lot of you out there enjoy the pain of the peppers. So maybe this does have some people who would very much enjoy this product. So moving on from the pepper conversation, let's get into the base of this formula. Now there seems to be a very typical base formula for this product. The first ingredient in all of them is polybutene. And this is a very common ingredient in a lot of lip glosses. This is what's gonna give you that high shine. And they do say that this lip gloss is non-sticky, but this particular ingredient does have a sticky feeling to it. I believe the other hydrocarbon ingredients are gonna contribute to this formula and make this product non-sticky, but there may still be some sort of stickiness to this product and maybe just not as much as what's typical in a normal lip gloss. Like I said, do have the same first few ingredients. There are two of the colors that have calcium sodium borosilicate very, very high on the list, much higher than any of the other ones. This is a glass-like material. You see this a lot in glitter eyeshadows. This is what gives that glittery effect. Now, don't let the fact that it's glass scare you. This has been milled down enough to where it's safe for cosmetic use. It does impart a really, really pretty glittery look to it. There's also a sister ingredient in here with calcium aluminum borosilicate. So they're very similar, but it is the calcium sodium borosilicate that is highest on this list. The two colors that have this highest on the list is Chucky. The other one is Jelly Shoes. Now, if you can see from both of these, you see they have a very glittery look to them. All the other colors seem to be more just shiny and not as much of a glitter look to them from what I can tell in these pictures, or at least significantly less than those two shades. So to sum up this product, I'm not into it, but if someone were to get it, I would really like to know what it feels like on your lips when you used it. So if you got this product, let me know what you thought of it. Lastly, we're gonna talk about the On Your Color Matte Lipstick. Now this was probably the product that I saw from this line talked about the most, I think because of the shape of the product for many reasons. And this was one that I actually purchased. So I will be trying it out and letting you know what I think once I get it in my hands. 
One thing I did want to mention about this product is that there's no humectant type of ingredients, which makes sense because it is a matte lipstick, but that being said, that means that you are going to want to use some sort of moisturizing lip balm prior to use, otherwise this is going to enhance any sort of dry spots that you may have on your lips. I know it's typically said with pretty much every lip product, but I do want to emphasize it specifically for this product because of the type of product that it is. The main ingredient in this product is dimethicone, which is going to give you that matte look. It's also going to help this be a very smooth product, and hopefully this will mean that it's going to apply really well on the lips. Octododecanol is a liquid wax, and this is going to help keep your product from separating. It also has nylon 12 in this product, which is very good for spreadability of colors, and I see this a lot in eyeshadow. I don't know if I've seen it in lipstick before, but I really love it in eyeshadow. But so I hope I'm going to love it just as much in the lipstick formula. It doesn't have a fragrance ingredient or a flavoring ingredient. All it has is ethyl vanillin. So this lipstick should have that kind of birthday cake, vanilla taste to it, which seems to be a theme of all of her products from what I'm seeing. And I really don't have a lot to say about the ingredients of this product other than it looks like a typical lipstick with emollient ingredients and different kinds of waxes. It looks like it should apply well where you should get a not too creamy feel, but not so matte feeling that it feels like your lips are the Sahara. So hopefully it works out well. Again, I will let you know later when I try this product out. Overall for these products, I was only really interested in the two products, the lip stain and the matte lipstick, which was the one product I did buy from the lip line. The other two ingredients, I don't know if there's a huge market. I'm really not into that tingling feeling of plumping lip products. So those two products were just a no go for me. And I am surprised that she came out with products that did this because I really didn't think this was a trend anymore. Maybe, maybe I'm just very much unaware of what is trendy with the kids nowadays. That very well could be the case. Let me know what you're thinking about these products. Let me know if there's any other products from her line that you would like me to talk about. And make sure you give this video a thumbs up and click the subscribe button so you don't miss another video. And with that, I will see you in my next video.